as I walk out of Cork City and along the River Lee. On the other side, you can see all these big, historic, very expensive looking buildings. And just beyond there is Shanakiel and what was once Shanakiel Hospital. After the Irish leader Michael Collins was shot dead, he was brought by his men to Shanakiel Hospital, by which time he was long dead. But this would have been the place where his body was kept overnight. Michael Collins was shot and killed in Bailna Blaw on the 22nd of August 1922 by anti-treaty soldiers. After he was shot dead, his men put him in an armoured car and transported him to Shanakiel Hospital. But the journey from Bailna Blaw to Cork City was anything but straightforward. For example, when they reached the village of Calumny, the armoured car got bogged down in a field and the men were forced to take Michael Collins' body out of the armoured car and put it into a tender. Before Calumny Village, they also stopped at Aherla, which would be my next stop, around one hour's walk from here, maybe a little bit more. So I'm now walking in reverse the very route that Michael Collins' body was transported around a hundred years ago, 101 years ago. On my right hand side is a Hurla Beg. From the road here you can just see all the trees. This is a very large estate and in the middle of the forest is a very large house. Before the armoured car with Michael Collins' body reached Calumny. The men stopped into this house in here, which was believed at the time to be a safe house. And when they got there, they carried Michael Collins' body inside the house and they lay, laid him out on, I believe, the dining room table, where they then placed a fresh bandage on his head and got ready to continue their journey. It is a, a pe peculiar feeling to think that a hundred years ago, Michael Collins' body was brought right in there to that house. Lovely stay in this guest house behind me. I thought it was just a standard bed and breakfast type place in the country, but it turns out to be this enormous manor with horses and everything out in front. Woke up this morning after a lovely co warm, cozy sleep and it's raining. It's, it's, it's supposed to rain for the whole day, so I've already prepared myself, kinda. <laughs> Head good, body good, feet good, mind good. All good. Let's go.
The ambush site is just up ahead. I believe this is the laneway that the soldiers who ambushed Michael Collins' con convoy travelled up. So I think they went up this laneway and they were eventually shooting down at the convoy from the high road. This here is Bailna Blah in West Cork and the very spot where Michael Collins, the Irish leader, was shot and killed on August 22, 1922. There's a cross up here, but also a white pillar with a black cross here. And I believe, I think, this is the very spot where Collins took his last breath. Michael Collins was traveling around West Cork at the time on this day, inspecting the many garrisons, I think in McCroom, Bandon, Clonakilty. And as he was traveling through this area here, Bailna Blaw, he was ambushed, his convoy was ambushed by anti-treaty men. Collins knew this was a stronghold for the opposition, all this area. He also knew some of the most high profile and most experienced members were in this area. And in spite of that, he still traveled through on a very, with a very small convoy. There was a motorbike scout at the front. There was a tender with soldiers behind that. Then there was the Leyland or Leyland with Michael Collins sitting in the back with his right hand man Dalton and an armored car coming up the rear. When they were first ambushed, Dalton said to the driver, drive like hell. And Michael Collins apparently said, apparently said, no, stop, we'll get out and fight them. And they began to exchange fire with the anti-treaty men. So the convoy was down here. Eventually the anti-treaty men moved up to the high road here. They exchanged fire for around 20 minutes. And at one point the members began running down the road Collins saw this, said to his men, look lads, they're on the run. He stepped out from behind the armored car and he was shot in the side of the head and killed. It's definitely a day to lie low to the wall and let the bitter weather pass. It says Kilhassen was the site of a church and ancient burial ground with uninscribed grave markers from 1680. in the corner here. I think this is where they would have held the chalices. Two hours of about 10 kilometers left. I'm so lucky I have this. I need this to get through the next two hours. <laughs> I love the names of the bands. There's Ohio Hill Music Festival. That's tonight, isn't it? The thirtieth. Anyway, the, the band Celtic Knights. Okay, Flake the Gander. 
<laughs> simple things and bog the donkey. <laughs> Wristbands on sale, 20 euro. I bet you there's DVDs as well. That's around 80 kilometers I've walked between yesterday and today. It's not a competition, right? I don't care about distance, but I would not have been able to do that a few weeks ago and feel okay, right? I feel totally fine right now. Fantastic. The lovely lady that's hosting me tonight, she sent me a message just now. She said, can I rescue you somewhere? I'll pick you up in the car, it's a miserable day. You can't be out walking in that. And she said, I won't tell anyone, I'll bring you the rest of the way. <laughs> I said, no, I'm walking. Nobody will know, I will know. Okay, this is a mass rock. So during penal times, when everything was banned, our ancestors would have come here to attend mass. It also has here on Gorta Moor. This was the famine. Population was nearly halved in Ireland. One million died, one million emigrated, and one million remained to struggle on. So this is actually dedicated to everyone who died or emigrated during the Great Famine. <laughs> 